What's up guys, it's Kaze here. So with WrestleMania about a week away at the time of this recording, I've been seeing a lot of rumors about celebrities possibly showing up and making special guest appearances. Now, over the years, celebrity guest appearances have been hit or miss. And I don't mean just at WrestleMania, I mean anytime a celebrity's in WWE. Like sometimes you get great moments like Mike Tyson in the 90s or you get your biggest star in the company jobbing out to a wannabe rapper. I'm doing a video soon on this, by the way. Shh, don't tell them. Anyways, the reason why celebrities are so hit and miss in WWE is because sometimes you can tell that they really respect the sport and they really wanna be a part of it. And other times you can tell they're just doing it for a paycheck or to promote whatever BS they have going on. Now this usually sparks a debate between casual fans and hardcore fans. Usually the time that celebrities take up on WrestleMania cards is time that could be given to a mid-card wrestler who has never been on a WrestleMania card before, who just flew out their friends and family just for their match to get cut or reduced to 18 seconds. Before I start, I want to say thank you guys so much for showing love on that South Park video. Definitely more like that coming soon. I actually have a ton of ideas. But without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> So first on the list, I have Rob Gronkowski, specifically when he hosted WrestleMania 36. Now, none of this was actually Rob's fault and he did a pretty good job, all things considered. It's just, this was the WrestleMania during shutdown and there were no fans whatsoever. He also had just won the Super Bowl the year prior and retired for the first time. So he was looking to do more outside of the football world. Fun fact while researching this video, by the way, there's a common misconception that WWE went to two night WrestleManias because they couldn't fit everything they wanted to on one card, mainly because that's what they said. They actually went to two night manias to lower health risk. The theory being that if we spread the matches out over two nights, then we'll have less people backstage. And they actually ended up liking the financial benefits of it all and decided to continue it. This also means that we got two nights of Gronk and he's also in Mojo Raleigh. And although they were doing the best they could given the circumstances, many fans, including myself, did not want to see this during WrestleMania. Rob's promo was also super energetic. I guess he was trying to get the crowd hyped at home, but he was just in an empty room with music playing. So he was met with dead silence. The clip I had was actually too awkward to put in by itself. So I added my own sound effects. And we need your boy, Rock, to host it. Yeah, I'm so excited. So Gronk performed a spot where he jumped off of a platform onto a group of unidentified wrestlers, and he did this in order to win the 24-7 championship. However, it turns out that there was a lot of hesitation on Gronk's side to do the spot, so much that Vince had to do it himself in order to show Gronk that it was a safe move. And this also gained him a bit of heat backstage. He ended up announcing his return to football just months after signing with WWE. And there were actually hopes within the company that he transitioned from football to wrestling. But they granted him his release and he went on to win another championship. Okay, so next I have Kid Rock at WrestleMania 25. So I never realized it until making this video, but Vince McMahon really loves Kid Rock. Kid Rock has performed at multiple pay-per-views. His songs are also the soundtrack to multiple pay-per-views, including a WrestleMania. His song was even used in the trailer for WWE 2K15. You remember how cool that trailer was? and how disappointing that game was. So Kid Rock starts his set and WWE will oftentimes have an artist perform during WrestleMania. And it's usually to break up the monotony of just straight wrestling. However, I do hear that fans prefer no concerts during their shows just because it's already long enough. So when Kid Rock went on to perform not one, not two, but five songs, it left the live audience and audiences at home feeling like the show was being dragged out. Not only that, this cut into the Divas Battle Royal match, which also had Santino Morello winning, and the entire women's roster was pretty upset about this. Kid Rock's set ended up being about 12 minutes long, and we can even be generous on setup and cleanup time and give it about 10 minutes on each. That's still about 32 minutes dedicated to Kid Rock at WrestleMania. Kid Rock was later inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2018, the last time fans saw him, he was in the crowd in SummerSlam 2022, where he made out with some lady named Trailer Trash Tammy. Hey, hey man, boo. come on. That's her hey, name. That's her name. So next I have Snoop Dogg's appearance at WrestleMania 39. Now, I do want to preface this by saying 
Snoop Dogg was not the issue here. In fact, he actually turned what could have been a disaster into gold. So we have The Miz and Snoop in the ring, and Miz is complaining that he's been put in a match that he wasn't ready for, and all of a sudden out comes Shane McMahon, and he's out there to put Miz in another match. I guess Shane really had to find some way to get on WrestleMania, and Vince also wanted him there. So Shane McMahon comes off the ropes, and he's going for a leapfrog over Miz, and just tears his quad. Now, I know what you're thinking. Didn't Vince McMahon tear his quads? Yes, and I also did a bit of math to better understand the McMahon quadriceps. Now, when Vince tore his quads, he was about 59 years old, and when Shane tore his, he was about 53 years old. I don't have anything to infer from that, other than the McMahon quads should be monitored after the age of at least 52. So with Shane on the floor thriving in pain, Snoop Dogg shows us some S-tier improv skills by punching Miz in the face, giving him the most awkward people's elbow I've ever seen in my life, and then he leaves. In style. So yeah, like I said, Snoop Dogg was not the issue in this segment. The real catastrophe is that WWE thought Shane McMahon was going to outshine Snoop Dogg in any way. Now this was entertaining for me watching it live, but in all actuality, this was a pretty ridiculous segment. Okay, so next I have Snooki at WrestleMania 27. Now this entire WrestleMania was actually very mid to me. I watched it live. This was before the WWE Network, so we paid for the pay-per-view. All just to see Michael Cole run wild for 30 minutes and for Snooki to have a match with Trish Stratus being one of her partners. So during the dreadful guest host era of Monday Night Raw, Snooki was one of the guest hosts and she started beef with Vicky Guerrero. This led to a mixed tag team match between Snooki, John Morrison, and Trish Stratus versus Dolph Ziggler and Lay Cool. Now, Snooki did just fine. The reason this is on this list is because the cross promotion was just not in tune with WWE's fan base at all. This is also the WrestleMania when The Rock returned after seven years and started building up his match with John Cena a year in advance. So there were celebrities popping up all over the place throughout the whole pay-per-view. Snooki was actually there to promote Jersey Shore season three, and I'm ashamed to say it's one of their best seasons. Okay, so last on the list, I have Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam Bigelow at WrestleMania 11. Now, given the time and the circumstances, this match was pretty okay. It was passable at best. But this was 1995, and the company was struggling for any type of star power whatsoever. So the match itself made sense. However, having it be the main event of your WrestleMania is pretty crazy. Now, WrestleMania 11 is pretty bad in entirety. And no disrespect to any of these guys I'm about to mention, because they are legends, but this given night, it wasn't it for them. But Taker vs. Bundy, not memorable. Backlund vs. Hart, pretty forgettable as well. Even HBK vs. Diesel. And even all of those matches should have main evented before we got Bam Bam Bigelow vs. Lawrence Taylor. And don't get me wrong, both were beast in their own right. I actually heard a man was forced to retire because Lawrence Taylor broke both his legs. So if you're watching this Lawrence Taylor, please don't break my legs. And I can never disrespect either of them, but this was a non-wrestler and a WrestleMania main event. How would you feel if in today's age, Rob Gronkowski main evented WrestleMania? I'll answer for you, pissed. Oh yeah, by the way guys, he won. So imagine how people felt with no internet to vent to. So this match inevitably didn't do much for either men's career or the WWE. It was a good spectacle for that night and that month of previous buildup, but Bam Bam went back to the mid card and Lawrence Taylor went off to do Lawrence Taylor stuff. That being said, WWE has really honed in their guest appearances and really made sure that they're actual fans of the product before they bring them on. And the problem isn't necessarily they're taking time away from the wrestlers, the problem is they may not appreciate the time they're taking. Like for someone to main event WrestleMania and then to never do business with the company ever again, it's kind of wild. Oh, hey, it's Lawrence Taylor. Ah, why? But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I want to thank everybody that's showing up and showing love. You guys have been so easy to talk to and just fun to communicate with. I really do appreciate your feedback and insight. Like it's helping improve the videos and also letting me know what you guys like. Let me know in the comments if I missed any celebrities or crazy celebrity moments. These were just the ones that came to my head. I'm sure there's a ton more. 
WrestleMania next week as well as another video. So keep your seatbelts on and until next time, keep it kaze.